In this video, I'm going to be showing and demonstrating to you Claude 2, which is the latest model by Anthropic. So Claude 2 is notable in that it can accept up to 100,000 tokens within its limit. Now, the other thing that's nice with this is within their GUI, they have support to be able to upload documents of all sorts of types by default. So I'll demonstrate that in, in just a moment. Now a couple housekeeping items with this is right now it is limited to anyone within the US or UK to get started and then because this is a developers focused channel this model can also be accessed by their API as well. So from what I read the pricing is the same as their previous model and yeah without further ado let's get into it. So the first thing that I wanted to do to demo it is I wanted to get up as close as I could to that 100,000 uh, limit with that uh, token limit. So what I did is I went and fetched three different of the 10Q filings from uh, Facebook, Apple, and Google. And when I tried this uh, initially, I tried it with Apple, Google, and Microsoft, and it gave me a notification that the limit is X amount of percent too long. So that feature alone is very nice because in ChatGPT, for instance, if you put in something too long, you don't know that it's too long uh, until you hit that enter key and you get an error message. So being able to proactively count those to tokens is super helpful. So one thing in this example, so I was just, I just wanted to ask it a broad question of just like who's doing better, right? So um, within the results, so it parsed through all these filings and just to give you an idea, these filings are very, very long. Uh, so if I open up Facebook, you'll see that that's 145 pages. If I open up Apple, that's 28 pages. And then if I open up Google, that's 45 or 46 pages rather. So over 200 pages of documents, and this only took a moment to parse through. So it said, okay, revenue is up. It sort of gives me a highlight of all the different uh, details within that filing. And then it gives me my response here. So overall, Google and Apple appear to be executing well by leveraging, et cetera, et cetera. You know, Meta is facing some near term challenges, et cetera, et cetera. So super great, right? Like really sort of blew me away the fact that you can uh, put so much information within their, their token window here. So to uh, go back to the main page, you can just click the logo here. I think there's also a command K option to start a new chat. Now you will see all your chats within this uh, main page here. So there isn't that uh, like left hand toolbar like there is on um, the ChatGPT um, implementation, um, but uh, they're here nonetheless. So you're able to save things, which is really great because it's like sometimes if you have files and you can go back to the chat and if you want to interact with it, it's all there. There's a couple of things that I think would be nice, like if we just would be able to, instead of going into each chat and deleting them, like when I was setting up this video, I had to like go into each and delete them all. It would be nice just to have a little X there, but that's like really <laughs> a minor thing, right? So they do have some examples. These are the core examples that they provided here, which I'll just go into quickly. So within the Python example, you see that you can provide code. And the one nice thing with this is you can provide code by pasting it into the context window, but you can also upload a document, which I'll demonstrate in just a moment. So you see here, this is a simple rock, paper, scissors game in Python. Here's how it works. So you can imagine if you had like a complex code base, there's definitely going to be some code bases that fit within this context window. You know, if you have like a giant mono repo, maybe not, but you know, for a lot of projects, you'll be able to put in a lot of different files here. So I'll demonstrate that quickly here. So oops, if I go back here and I start a new chat, so I'll just open up and let's just see what happens. So if I just go ahead and highlight, let's just say everything here and I go ahead. Now you'll see something as soon as I drag, you can only have five items. So if you're going to be putting in a ton of code, you might have to get a little creative. So let's just say we'll put in our index code interpreter. We'll put in five files here. So these are relatively small files compared to the last one. But if I say what, um, 
can I do to make these TypeScript supported? So the, this project is just a plain vanilla JavaScript project that I've been working on. TypeScript is something that I've thought about implementing or I would like to implement. So let's just see what it does here. So it's quickly parsed all these files as you see, and you can see here, okay, add a TypeScript type um, or add the TypeScript types uh, for each function. You can go in the parameters, et cetera, et cetera. So it breaks it up. It's not exactly what um, I would have uh, wanted, but let's just say, let's give it a better prompt. Let's say, uh, rewrite all of them for me. And let's just see what happens. So when I first tried this, I was curious to see with the upload feature, if there's a download feature, and right now it doesn't appear to be the case. So you could imagine that would be helpful instead of just having copy code. If you also had download, that would be excellent. If that's something that's, uh, you know, uh, soon to be available, hopefully, especially for coders. And then in, in here, you see, you see sort of a similar thing that I've experienced lately with uh, ChatGPT, GPT-4, where if you ask it a question, especially on long files, it will start to redact answers and you sort of have to uh, force force its hand, or force your hand rather a little bit. So if I say, don't omit anything, return the TypeScript in full. So the other thing while this is loading up, the interface is really nice. I think there's like minor UX things, like I mentioned about being able to delete conversations. I do like having the conversations in pane on the left-hand side, like ChatGPT. I don't mind them on that main interface, but it would be nice if you had a little flyout menu or something where you could see them all here. Um, but as you see here, we are starting to get closer to what we want. So it's just sort of rewriting the project with TypeScript. So I'm not gonna be testing this or anything. I'll take a look at this a little later, but just to give you an idea, like, you know, instead of going into each file, copy and pasting within the context window, now you can just upload your files directly, which is huge, I think. It's really great in terms of, uh, you know, the user experience. So other things, obviously, you can summarize. I sort of demonstrated that with all the different filings. If I go back to the filings and I just say, um, what are the risks for Apple? So you can see, even once it's loaded up that initial large context window, when you ask questions, it might feel a little bit longer to be able to parse that, but considering that that's pretty close to that 100,000 uh, token limit, you'll see here that it is still pretty quick considering what uh, you're having it do. Like you can imagine, say the human equivalent of trying to sift through 200 documents or even uh, maybe not physically sifting through, but trying to search through and parse different parts. Uh, it can be something that, you know, takes some time. So, you know, we'll see this sort of load and with larger, you know, token windows, it will obviously take a little bit more time. So while that's loading, I'll just go over to the blog post and do a little housekeeping. So I'll just bring this up to the side for us and keep this by the side. So you see the answer is loading. Now, the one thing with um, the model right now is it is available within the US and UK. However, if you have a VPN, you will be able to try this out. So I can't speak for all VPNs, but let's just say some of them allow you to do this pretty easily. Similar for BARD, if you're in a restricted area and you go and you set your location to US, uh, it does work from my experience. So um, other aspects uh, that it demonstrates in the blog post, so there's uh, the multi-step output, you can summarize, make it a table, there's the coding with Claude, um, and uh, there's other things in here where it talks about performance. So this is their latest and greatest model. Uh, in, in my next uh, videos here, I'll be going through actually implementing their API and seeing how this works to be able to, you know, play with a model that has such a 
high token limit. I think for coders in particular, I can speak for myself, it is based on the results initially after seeing this, obviously I've only played with this with, you know, for, for a number of hours, is I can say this is a big competitor to ChatGPT. You know, the simple user experience features of being able to drag those documents, not me needing to, you know, use like the Python code interpreter uh, to accomplish, you know, like uploading files and having it do something is really great. Um, and yeah, like I, up until this point, I have to say I've been uh, primarily focused on using uh, OpenAI and ChatGPT within uh, the videos that I've, I've produced, but just on um, first impressions on this alone, I'm definitely going to be diving in and creating more content on Anthropic and their model. So if you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe, and otherwise until the next one.